Hey, this is Kat. So, we're just about ready to start doing some of our own programming. In our computer science class, we focus on programming primarily Java applets. You can program lots of different things in a Java applet, and that might include things like games. To do this, we do need to know how to program, and we also need to know a little bit about drawing. So we need to start with some basic drawing skills within our applet. And to do that, we need to understand how and where in a Java applet our creations appear. So first of all, we have a basic applet window. At the top left of that applet window, that is our starting reference position. And its position is 0, 0. Now that first value refers to the horizontal or the x value. So that is the horizontal or x value. The second one is the y value and the y value is vertical. There we go. So looking at the applet that I've got on the screen, it is wider than it is high. So our bottom corner might be something like 200 wide, 100 high. Just an example. So when we start to draw within our applet, we need to decide where on the screen the starting position is for our drawing. We're going to start with a rectangle. Now we might start our rectangle. Now you'll have to excuse me going out of scale. This is just some ideas. So we have to start with our, um, our top corner and I'm going to pick this corner here. Now my typical starting point is always 2020 so let's just assume that that is 20 comma 20 and then I have to decide how wide my rectangle will be and I'm going to specify that this one will be 100 wide and then I also have to specify how tall it is going to be. And it goes down from the dot. And so it might be 50. Let's close in the rectangle. That means that the finished corner here is not 100 across, but it's 100 wide from the starting point, which was 120. So if it started at 20 across, and it went for 100 wide, that means that my finishing spot is 120 across. In terms of the height, it started at 20, it went down for 50, and that means it ends at 70. That means that this bottom corner has a reference of 120, 70, remembering that the x is always first. So if I were to actually draw this rectangle in Java, I would use the graphics object that exists in the method called paint because it's designed to do drawings on the screen. Then I specify I'm going to use G, my graphics object, and then I have a dot, and then I have to specify the method that I will use to create a rectangle. If I want to draw the box of a rectangle, I use the term draw rect if I want to have a filled in rectangle, I will use fill rect. So in this example, I'm just going to use the outline. So I would have draw rectangle, open bracket. Now here's where I put in my starting point, which is 20, 20. And I have my width. and my height and that section of code should draw a rectangle. Let's test it out in Eclipse. Here we have Eclipse open and we are going to create a new project and we're going to make a drawing in that project. So we start off with file and new and we're creating a new Java project. We're going to call this one drawing 
applets. We're not really drawing applets, but we're drawing in applets. While that project folder is selected, we're going to create a new class. And I'm going to call this one Drawing 1. Remember, no spaces in the file names. Okay, and that sets up a basic document for me. Now, last time I mentioned the fact that in our program there are certain things that we need. So I'm just going to explain quickly what you need and why you need it. So at the top of the program, we need to import some things. When Java was created, they predefined a number of um, a number of classes and methods and basically tools for us to use throughout our own programming. So rather than rewriting all those tools ourselves, we just import the ones that exist. So we're going to start off by typing import and then we need to specify what aspects we want to import. So we're going to import java.awt.star and semicolon to end the line. Our next line we're going to import java.applet.star and a semicolon. This means that we have all the tools for our basic graphics and for our applet. What we need to do then is go down to the line where we have our, our program name which is drawing one and at the end of that we need to say extends applet. This is basically telling our program that it is an applet and that means it follows a certain set of rules in order to run. Okay, now everything for our program has to go inside this block. There's an open brace and a closed brace and everything needs to live inside there or it's not considered part of the program. The first thing that we're going to, do, going to put in is a method called public void init. And open and close brackets and then it's its own block so it needs open and close braces as well. Public void in it is there, we're not going to use it at the moment, but it's an area which is used for initializing some components or some objects that you might use in your program. As I said, we're not going to use it just yet. And the last method that we need to write is public void paint. Paint is the method that's designed for using uh, that's designed for us to do our drawing and our screen components. And for us to be able to draw, we need to have a graphics object in there and we're going to call our graphics object G. Now it also needs a pair of open and close braces. And it's in paint that we're going to draw our, do our drawing. So if you remember from the drawing that we did, we were using our graphics component, we used G and then we used a dot now here I have a list of methods available to me for things that I can do. As I said before, if it's draw, it's often an outline. And if it's fill, it's often a solid block of whatever shape. So I'm actually going to use draw rectangle. So I can either select it from the list or I can type it out myself. I'm going to type it myself. Open brackets. And it's already telling me I need an X and a Y, which is my starting coordinates, and I need a width and a height. So I'm going to replace the X with the 20, making sure that's separated with a comma. My Y is going to be 20. In our drawing, we said that it was 100 wide and it was 50 high. And we put a semicolon to end the line. Okay, now by rights, when we run this, just down from the top left corner, we should have a rectangle. Run it, and it will prompt you to save. Yes, we would like to save. And we have a rectangle. Let's draw a circle. We'll fill this one in. We need to specify a starting position. We might specify 50, 70. I'm just making up numbers here. Now if I want my oval 
to be a circle, I need to have the same width and height. So I'm going to make it a small little circle, 50, and a semicolon to end the line. We'll run that one. And we now also have a circle in addition to our rectangle. Just close that one. Okay, I'm going to change this to be a solid rectangle, so I'm going to change it to fill. I'm also going to set it to be different colors. So I can use colors that exist in Java and the fact that I imported some aspects here, that gives me access to those colors. So if I want to change the color, I use G dot set color. Remembering that Java was written in America, so we use American spelling. And here I use color dot, uh, let's pick a color, we'll go with blue and a semicolon. So I should have a blue rectangle. I'm going to do change the color of the oval as well, g dot set color. Color and I would like a red for that one. Now if I run this, I should have my shapes in the exact same place, only different colors. So we've got blue and we have red there. The reason that I've done this is I'd like to show you the importance of sequence. Sequence refers to the fact that this line of code will get executed first, then this one, then this one, and this one. So I'm just going to change my coordinates here. I'm going to bump that one up a little bit. And hopefully now we end up with the circle on top of the rectangle. Okay. Now, if I rearrange these lines, so I'm just going to select those and move them. So they are now above the rectangle. If I run this piece of code, my circle will now be behind the rectangle. This is because I draw the circle and then I draw the rectangle. So it's really important to remember that when you write code, everything will happen in the order that you tell it to. So it will go from the top to the bottom. So I've got some little notes here that this happens first, then the next line, the next line, and so it continues. If you ever want to put some information in your code that doesn't appear on the screen, it's just a comment for yourself, you can just use a double forward slash. Once you've had a bit of a play, perhaps challenge yourself by creating a scenery. Here I've used a combination of different colors, different shapes, filled in, also not filled in, I've used some lines and also some text commenting as I went along what was what. I've created a small scenery. So here we have a little house with a yard, the sun, some clouds, a tree. Give it a whirl. If you'd like some more help with knowing what methods you have access to, then perhaps you can go to Google and you can search for Java graphics methods. And the Oracle site is quite good. We'll go there and it gives us some information about the graphics object. If you scroll down in the method summary, it will tell you a little bit about what methods are available and what those methods will do. It will also tell you 
what information you need to give it. So an X variable, a Y variable, a width and a height in this case. So check out the internet, it will help you figure out what methods are available to you.